Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer with For and From St Catherine's. This week we're looking at the story of Jacob, the grandson of Abraham, and the, the father of the twelve tribes of Israel. Twelve sons he had, and they became the twelve tribes of Israel. And today we're going to look at the story of the birth of those twelve sons. Well, not quite twelve of them, we'll get as far as eleven before before I run out of steam. Listen, there's a passage with a lot of names in it. Well, 11 to be precise. No, there's more than that. Anyway, it's an interesting story. Uh, when What we had yesterday was Jacob had fallen in love with the younger sister, Rachel. He didn't love the older sister, Leah. She had something with her eyes, not quite sure what. Uh, but dad decided that he was jolly well going to marry the older sister first. So he slipped her in when he wasn't looking. And he woke up the next morning having had his wedding night with the wrong woman. Uh, and had to do 14 years of hard labour uh, in total to get his beloved Rachel. So it was tough on Leah, the older sister. She wasn't loved. God saw that. God did something about it. That's the story that we're going to have today. Join me for that. Join me for our opening prayer. And on to the reading, which starts in chapter 29 of Genesis, goes on to, on to 30. Uh, it is quite long, so I'm going to rattle through it. I had a look to see if I could cut some stuff out, but it's not really cuttable, but I think it's rattleable. So uh, I'll take parts of it at a swift pace, if you'll forgive me. When the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Leah conceived and bore a son, and she named him Reuben, which means a son. See, I have a son. For she said, because the Lord has looked on my affliction, surely now my husband will love me. She conceived again, and she bore a son, and she said, because the Lord has heard that I am hated. He has given me a son, this son also. And she named him Simeon. Again she conceived a bore a son, and she said, Now this time my husband will be joined to me, because I've borne him three sons. Therefore he was named Levi. And she conceived again, and she bore a son. And she said, This time I will praise the Lord. Therefore she named him Judah. Then she ceased bearing. When Rachel younger sister saw that Leah bore that sorry when Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children she envied her sister and she said to Jacob give me children or I shall die and Jacob became angry with Rachel and said am I in the place of God who was withheld from you the fruit of the womb then she said here is my maid Bilhah Go to her that she may bear upon my knees and that I too may have children through her. So she gave him her maid, Bilhah, as a wife. And Jacob went into her and Bilhah conceived and bore Jacob a son. And then Rachel said, God has judged me and has also heard my voice and given me a son. Therefore, she named him Dan. And Rachel's maid, Bilhah, conceived again and bore Jacob a second son. And then Rachel said, with weighty wrestlings, I have wrestled with my sister and have prevailed. And she named him Naphtali. When Leah saw that she had ceased childbearing, she took her maid, Zilpah, and gave her to Jacob as a wife. Then Leah's maid, Zilpah, bore Jacob a son, and Leah said, Good fortune! So she named him Glad Gad. And Leah's maid, Zilpah, bore Jacob a second son. And Leah said, Happy am I, for the women will call me happy. So she named him Asher. We haven't finished yet. In the days of the wheat harvest, Reuben, who was the eldest son, went and found some mandrakes in the field, and he brought them to his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, please give me some of your son's mandrakes. But she said to her, is it a small matter that you have taken away my husband? Would you take away my son's mandrakes also? Rachel said, then he may lie with you tonight for your son's mandrakes. Jacob came in from the field in the evening. Leah went out to meet him. She said, you must come to me, for I've hired you with my son's mandrakes. 
So he lay with her that night, and God heeded Leah, and she conceived, and she bore Jacob a fifth son. But Leah said, God has given me my hire, because I gave my maid to my husband. So she named him Issachar, and Leah conceived again, and she bore Jacob a sixth son. Then Leah said, God has endowed me with a good dowry. Now my husband will honour me, because I have borne him six sons. And she named him Zebulun. Afterwards, she bore a daughter and named her Dina. So just tot up at this point, we're nearly there. Leah has borne six sons to Jacob. The two, uh, the, the two servant girls have each borne him two. So that totes up to ten. Rachel still hasn't produced any children in all these years. Then God remembered Rachel. And God heeded her and opened her womb. And she conceived and bore a son and said, God has taken away my reproach. And she named him Joseph, saying, May the Lord add to me another son. This story begins with two sisters, an older sister and a younger sister. They're both buried to the same man, to Jacob. But he loves one of them and he doesn't at all love the other. He never wanted to marry Leah. Uh, he just got dumped her when he was drunk. and He didn't realise till it was too late. So as they embark on their married life, this strange threesome, uh, Jacob loves one and not the other. But God handles it differently. And you see the story unfolding in the names that the children are given. I mean, just the narrative itself, and another son, and another son, and another son, it looks quite boring. But if you look at the names, then all of a sudden it's really quite interesting. So the first name, that the first son that Leah has, she calls, see, I have a son. It, it's, it's a gentle boast. I've got a son. I'm the elder sister. I've got a son. That's good. I'm ahead. I'm ahead of my younger sister. The next one is called, The Lord has seen that I am hated. Wow. That gives us an insight into what it felt like to be Leah. The Lord has seen that I am hated. And the implication is the Lord has given me this son as a compensation for the fact that my husband hates me. The third son has a similar ring to it. This time, my husband will be joined to me. There's almost a desperation now. I've borne him three sons. Surely this time he will recognise me really as his wife and will give me some respect and some love. What we see in these first three sons is, is the sadness of Leah, the sadness of her situation. But... God is blessing her. She sees this as God's blessing. And come the fourth son, she calls him, I will praise the Lord. There's kind of a sense there that she's got over it. She's got through it. She's got round the issue of the fact that her husband doesn't, uh, doesn't love her because God loves her and God has provided for her. Meanwhile, her younger sister has no kids at all. When she realises that she, uh, when Rachel realises that uh, she's being outdone by her sister, she hands over her servant girl, a trick that Abraham did uh, with his servant girl. And the first one, uh, she's very positive about, the Lord has heard my voice. This is the nearest thing to a son she thinks she's ever going to get. Uh, so she's thankful. But the second son through her servant girl, she calls, I have wrestled with my sister and prevailed. What a horrible name. What a horrible thought that Rachel is seeing this as a competition with her sister. I have wrestled with my sister and I have prevailed. Well, actually, no, Rachel, you haven't prevailed. Yes, your servant girl has produced two children, but your sister's produced four. So mm, scores on the doors, dear. At this, Leah has her servant girl get involved in it. So Jacob's now servicing four women. And uh, the next one is good fortune. Number six is happy am I. And then there's this weird story about Leah hiring her husband for the night from her sister for the price of some mandrakes. It's, it's a crazy family. It's a crazy, crazy family. But Jacob, who seems to do nothing other than just lie with whichever woman he's told to, uh, lies with her and she gets pregnant that same night. The Lord has given me my hire. 
The Lord is honouring my hard work in all of this, my devotion to the family. And then comes one last child, the sixth one for Leah herself, the eighth for her side of the family. God has given me a good dowry. In all of this, Leah sees that God is looking after her. Jacob isn't, but God is. And that is something that runs through the Bible all the way to the teaching of Jesus. Because in the teaching of Jesus, what we see, blessed are the poor, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, they will be comforted. Jesus, his teaching is saying, God is on the side of the underdog. God is on the side, on the side of the people who are not loved, who are not cared for, who are not respected. Leah was one of those. And God was absolutely on her side. And over the years, she came to realise it. As we go about our business, God is on the side of the underdogs. That's why we've got to look for it. When we pray Jesus' prayer, we pray your kingdom come, your will be done. And when we pray that, we always have to remember that God's kingdom is a kingdom of underdogs. God's kingdom is a kingdom of the underloved, undervalued, underappreciated, under-resourced people. Those are the people who God's kingdom is built on. Not the happy ones. Not the beautiful ones, not the popular ones, not beautiful and loved Rachel. God's kingdom is built on Leah with her squiffy eyes, unloved by her husband. Jesus was a descendant of Jacob. He was a descendant of one of these 12 sons. Guess, guess which was his ancestral mother? Leah. Of course it was Leah. Jesus was a descendant of Leah's fourth son, the one who she called, I will praise the Lord, Judah. God's blessing came through the unloved and undervalued wife. And as we pray, we need to remember that God still works to that strategy. Join me in the prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That just about brings us to the end of our daily prayer for today. And Rachel, the beautiful Rachel, the beloved Rachel did eventually get a son. God made her wait. God did indeed made her, make her wait. God put her in her place, I think. But eventually she did produce a son and she called him Joseph. And from Joseph, we get a cracking story in the Bible, which we'll look at in a few, time, uh, in a few weeks time. And uh, from that, we get a cracking Hollywood musical. <laughs> which I could break into song with, but I shan't. But he's not the one from whom Jesus was descended. The one from whom Jesus descended was a son of Leah's. Tomorrow, another story and more rivalry and more cheating. Jacob, who had cheated his brother, who had been cheated by his uncle. Well, now, well, join me tomorrow and you'll find out. It's a it's an intriguing story. It's a strange one. We'll decide tomorrow what to make of it. For today, we'll satisfy ourselves with the prayer of grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore.